Good evening. You're watching the news on Croatian television. Hurricane Irma made landfall in Florida on Sunday. The powerful storm, which already claimed 24 lives in the Caribbean, bore down on the Florida Keys. Forecasters say it's expected to travel up the state's western coastline. Over the past few days, authorities have ordered the evacuation of more than 6.5 million Florida residents. The storm lashed Miami, Fort Lauderdale and other major cities with driving rain and 215 kilometer per hour winds. It's also caused around 1 million power outages. We don't have the exact numbers of how many people stayed in the Keys, but think about that. I mean, they're going to have, you know, 130 mile an hour winds. They're going to have 10 to 25 inches of rain. This is a low lying area. Uh, and then on top of that, potential 15 foot of storm surge. We have uh, teams, incident management teams, power teams ready to go. We actually have liaisons and um, a multitude of counties that are about to take the brunt of the storm. Hurricane Irma left a trail of destruction in Cuba before it hit the U.S. Emergency crews were rescuing survivors from the coastal sections of Havana on Sunday. Waves 11 meters high swept away everything in sight in Malacona. No deaths have been reported, but many people have lost everything. The damage is expected to be in the millions of U.S. dollars. Torrential rain in Italy has triggered flooding in the Tuscan port city of Livorno. At least six people have died and two are missing. Between midnight and 2 a.m., Livorno saw more than 25 centimeters of rain. Authorities are warning residents that the danger is not over. Istria was hit by severe storms for the second time this summer. The Pazin area saw 150 liters of rain per square meter overnight. The peninsula's western coast was hardest hit by the heavy rain, which triggered flooding. Firefighters were on the scene to pump water out of cellars. The rain also caused traffic problems after torrents washed away dikes and caused the Rasha River to swell. We were called out to provide assistance in areas around Pazin, Tinyan, Kringa, Porec and Rovin, along with Pula, where we had three calls due to flooding. We've responded to some 50 so far. President Kolinda graber kitarevich has said she will demand clarification this week from Hungarian authorities on why they have said they will pull their support for Croatia's bid to join the OECD. The president is due to visit Hungary on Tuesday. Hungary is joining Slovenia in blocking Croatia's membership in the trade organization. While Slovenia is applying pressure on Croatia to abide by the border arbitration ruling, Hungary's reason for the move is Croatia's treatment of MOL CEO Jolt Hernadi. Croatia has an active arrest warrant for Hernadi on a bribery charge connected to the INA case. I have to say I am surprised I'll be in Hungary on Tuesday and will speak to Prime Minister Orban and President Ader. I hope I will get some clarification and that we can begin to discuss how to reverse this move. Croatia's new ambassador to the United States, Pierre Shimunovic, arrived in Washington a few days ago. The State Department reports Mr. Shimunovic has presented his credentials to U.S. President Donald Trump. According to a statement they spoke for about half an hour, President Trump expressed interest in Croatia's views on the situation in the region. North Korea held huge celebrations to mark the country's latest nuclear test a week ago. Pyongyang has fired 15 ballistic missiles this year, two of which the country claimed were intercontinental, while the last mid-range missile flew over Japan. NATO Secretary General told the BBC that North Korea's reckless behavior required a global response. I will not uh, speculate uh, about uh, whether uh, Article 5 will be applied uh, uh, in such a situation. Uh, what I will say is that we are now totally focused on how can we contribute to a peaceful uh, solution of the conflict and uh, press uh, North Korea to stop its nuclear and missile programs. The junior edition of the Vinkovci Autumn Festival, known as Vinkovačke Jeseni, was in full swing today. More than two and a half thousand young folklore dancers paraded through the city in traditional costumes from all of Croatia's counties. 
These young people are learning about their local heritage from their elders and keeping traditions alive through music, song and dance. This was a chance for them to show off what they've learned. I'm wearing a petticoat, an apron, a scarf and a purse. It's really important to nurture tradition. It is up to us young people to do it. It's important because today in Croatia it's really difficult to keep traditions alive. We're here to make sure they survive. An international film festival that focuses on alternative filmmaking has opened in Split. The Split Film Festival has established an award for young filmmakers for innovative cinematic expression, named after Ivan Martinez, the late Croatian filmmaker and Split native. Cinemaphiles will have the chance to see what's new in alternative cinema from around the world, with films from Iran, India, the Philippines and Mexico. The Split Film Festival runs until September 16th. Over eight days, we'll screen about 50 films that surpass the limits of what is commercially viable. The film program is divided into eight categories. There are competition programs for shorts and features, where an international jury will choose the winner. In sports, Croatia is facing off against Russia in the final 16 of the European Basketball Championships. The game got underway in Turkey about 40 minutes ago. If Croatia wins the game, they'll play the winner of the match between Greece and Lithuania in the quarterfinals. The current score is 35-33 to 33 for Russia. Tomorrow's forecast calls for cloudy skies with rain, showers, and thunder showers on the coast. There is a chance of heavier downpours in places. Elsewhere in Croatia, there may be some light, occasional rain, while the east will stay dry and sunny. There will be a high to gale force southwesterly wind along the Adriatic. The wind will fall and shift to a southwesterly in the north by afternoon and in Dalmatia by the end of the day. Morning lows will range from 14 to 19 degrees inland and from 19 to 24 on the coast. The day's highs will be mostly between 22 and 27 degrees and up to 31 degrees in Slavonia. The three-day outlook calls for cooler weather and northerly winds on Tuesday in the interior. Expect rain in the mountains. Wednesday will be sunny, but there could be some morning fog in the valleys. There will be a southwesterly wind, which will pick up on Thursday, when skies will be mostly sunny as well. Conditions will improve on the coast by Tuesday. Expect longer sunny spells with only a few showers mixed in, mostly in the north. There will be more sunshine on Wednesday, with only a few lingering showers in the south. A southeasterly wind will be on the rise. Thursday will bring a few showers to the north. Temperature-wise, Tuesday will be cooler, but the mercury will begin to climb again by midweek. And that brings us to the end of our program. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow.